Jean-Marie Raymond Ozias Turin was a French writer, banker and diplomat. He was born in 1861 in Grenoble, the son of Jean-Pierre Charles Léon Ozias de Turin and Marguerite Faure. He left France for the US after refusing military service in his country, living in the Black Hills and keeping a ranch named Fleur de Lis and breeding horses. In 1890, he emigrated to Canada following the outbreak of the Indian War, settling in Montreal. That year, he married Marie Trottier de Bourbienne, daughter of the Quebec Minister of Agriculture, before taking part in the Klondike Gold Rush. He was the vice president of the Bank of Savings in Seattle, Washington, and president of the Yukon Investment Company. He died in Montreal in 1940. He wrote adventure stories such as Leroy de Klondike, as well as the tract République Royale, a product of his lifelong monarchism. Today, we will review his 1904, The Last of the Mammoths, appearing in English in 1907. The book concerns Raoul Lefort, a French painter who has met, painted, and fallen in love with Eva, daughter of Senator John N. Corliss, also known as the Steel King due to the railway being how he makes his millions. He blurts out a marriage proposal to the Senator out of frustration with his concern for profit, and the Senator considers his proposition which, given he is a French artist who is not that affluent, is surprisingly nice of him. Then Eva shows up and denotes she also would like Raoul's suit to be accepted. The senator agrees on one condition. Raoul must bring him a mammoth. You see, Corliss had donated a natural history museum to his native city, but the one thing missing that all his millions could never buy is a mammoth. So Raoul is to set off for the pole, and if he finds a mammoth carcass, he will get to marry Corliss's daughter. Raoul decides to go all the easier since he has the senator's millions to draw on freely. But then he learns the senator had made the exact same offer to someone else for the exact same reward, that being Baron Ulrich von Sickingen, whose sole purpose in seeking matrimony in the US is to restore the ancestral castle on the banks of the Elbe. But Raoul can find no information on when Sickingen sailed, so he is a lot less worried as he charters the bankrupt Captain Jones and his whaling ship the Salvador, only to meet Sickingen on deck and learning the captain had signed an identical contract with both of them to double his profits. However, Jones is also the cause of further misery for all of them, as his insistence to go hunt a passing whale leads to his death, and for Raoul, his friend Hamilton, their guide Bob, and Sickingham being shipwrecked and stranded along the icy coast. They find some Koryak women keeping watch over a dead body, right before stealing the dead man's funerary offerings of salted fish and eating them, and being led to a local Koryak king named Tuluak. Hamilton had saved only one thing from the shipwreck, a distillery, and he uses his fire water to get all the Koryaks on his side to help Raoul find his mammoth. And they do, being nearly crushed to death by living mammoth emerging from a deep cavern. While sicking and slinks away, Raoul and Hamilton plan to kill the beast, before they eventually get it to impale its own brain on a tree. But as they are to bring it back home, sicking and steals their mammoth, and escapes on board the Salvador, leaving them behind. But just as he is to be presented as Ava's future husband at a grand ball call is giving, Bob bursts in and says Sicking and stole the mammoth and accidentaled himself into marrying a native Inuit woman. So the Baron slinks off, while the Senator gets Raoul freed from prison, where Raoul and Hamilton wound up as vagabonds, so he can be presented as Ava's husband. The writing has a lot of macabre moments, the utter abandonment of the shipwreck crew in the frozen waste, the finding of the dead Inuit hunter's corpse watched over by an old woman, her death at the sight of the mammoth. But then the quality of the writing dips and is overall uneven. 